problem is among my most favorite problems. Uh, you got these massively large numbers. We have Y is equal to 241,325 cubed minus uh, 241,319 cubed. So again, super large number. And we're supposed to evaluate this expression here that has a radicand that depends on Y. This is the square root of Y minus 54 over 18. Now, so again, massive number and obviously trying to stick Y directly in here and, and, and do any work on it would be very, very intimidating and difficult. So what, what do we do? We turn to our faithful companion algebra. Now, uh, so if you'll take a look at this expression, one of the benefits of algebra is it lets letters represent large numbers, okay? And so if you'll notice the difference between these two numbers in the uncubed version is six. Uh, if we take A to B 20, uh, 241, 1,319, and add, add six to this, we get the 25, not counting the cubes here, right? And so all of a sudden, it, it, this expression takes on a more manageable looking form. So, um, see, that, 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 I mean, that's, that's a good thing. Now, why is that beneficial? Is because we can let algebra uh, uh, solve the problem before we do any numerical substitutions. So, uh, what we do right here is just remember, recall the fact that, and I'll, I'll just write this down. Uh, this is fairly familiar, the sum, a binomial cubed, okay, A plus B quantity cubed. Okay, this is a standard pattern. You can multiply it out by hand, use Pascal's triangle, triangle or the binomial theorem, either one, but we have a, I, a cubed plus three A squared um, B. And this is identity, it holds for a, a, a complex numbers, uh, integers, real numbers. So it is an algebraic identity. Okay, about done with this, 3AB squared. And finally, B cubed. Now, what happens here, in all honesty, the, the, the problem is sort of designed to work. If any of the numbers were off up here, you wouldn't get uh, nice algebra ha to happen. So, but notice what happens here is that the A cubes cancel out. If you subtract A cubed from this, the A cubes would go away. And that, that's exactly what we exploited right here. Uh, A plus six quantity cubed, the A cubed term goes away and you're just left with literally this term, this term and this term, as you can see right here. Uh, B cubed corresponds to six cubed, three AB squared corresponds to this term right here and three A squared B corresponds to uh, this term right here. All right, now that simplifies to this nice looking expression right here where everything looks like it's divisible by something and maybe it'll factor down. So what we get is Y is equal to uh, A squared. Now notice Y up here. We can rewrite this is Y is equal to 18A squared plus 108A plus 216. Now, what? that's what Y is equal to, but we're interested in uh, Y minus 54 up here, right? We're interested in Y minus 54, so that's why we subtract it. Okay, when we subtract it, we get this expression, which in turn factors down to this nice expression. So we have y minus 54 is equal to this entire expression, right? So on the very next line, we can divide through by the 18, and we do end up with an expression that's a, a, a perfect square. It's a binomial squared. And again, folks, the numbers are designed, in fact, I made the problem up to work out nicely. So the, the problem is designed to work out nicely. Math is reserved. Uh, reversible. A lot of these things that look like miracles are just because somebody thought about the problem in reverse and created a, created a question. Okay. And so anyway, we have y minus 54 over 18 equals to this perfect square. From there, it follows that if you take the square root, you get a plus three. Now something to point out here, and I've seen quite a bit of confusion on this. Um, and a lot of people think there still should be a negative answer associated with this, 
but there's not. And it's just the simple truth. You either accept this convention or you don't. And it, I've seen people just almost fights on the internet over this, but you have Y minus 54 over 18 has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's just the nature of the square root function. If, if you didn't do this, the square root function would not be a function. It would be more than single valued. So at the very beginning, y minus 54 divided by 18 has to be greater than or equal to zero simply because it's the radicand of a function that, uh, that has a range that's positive. So, I mean, uh, there's, there's no two ways about that. If this were less than zero, then you would have imaginary numbers and we're not looking for that here. Okay, so in any event, it all works out nicely. Uh, this object uh, is equal to A plus three, but A was this right here, right? We chose A to be this. And so when you add three to that, this is our answer in all its splendor. And I just think it's so awesome how very little numerical computations went on. It was the structure of the algebra that handled this and you never had to do anything too laborious in terms of, of arithmetic. Let me know what you thought.